There's an old saying in the world of football, or soccer for our incorrect American viewers, it's a game of two halves. And whilst that's true in the most literal of senses, it was also extremely accurate for WWE in the year 2011, which could be split into two distinctive eras. Anything before CM Punk's first pipe bomb on the 27th June episode of Monday Night Raw was pretty much utter tripe, WWE at its Cena-loving PG worst. Anything after that felt like it had a renewed sense of vigor, a feeling that anything could and would happen with this loose cannon at the top of the card. One thing remained constant across the entire year, however, and that was WWE putting on some absolutely shocking matches. Let's take a look at some, shall we? I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 worst WWE matches of 2011. Join us. Number 10, the Royal Rumble match at the Royal Rumble. Co-founder of the Beach Boys, Mike Love, had a philosophy when it came to music. Don't F with the formula. Unfortunately, Mike Love wasn't booking WWE in 2011. If he was, then this whole mess might have been avoided. Save us, Mike Love. That year's edition of Royal Rumble was headlined by the traditional over-the-top battle royal, but this match was unlike any that had gone before it. An extra 10 participants were included, bumping the usual 30 entrants up to 40. More rest Wrestlers means more fun, right? No. Maybe the extra manpower would have worked if WWE had more recognizable stars on its roster at the time. Instead, the Rumble was filled out with undercard names like Yoshi Tatsu, Mason Ryan, and Ezekiel Jackson. Even the surprise returns failed to excite, with legends Booker T and Diesel getting less than four in-ring minutes between them. The end result of this experiment was quite a slog that ended with Alberto Del Rio punching his ticket to WrestleMania. Nice try, WWE. WWE, but you should have listened to Mike. Number 9, Big Show Kane, Kofi Kingston and Santino Morella versus The Core at WrestleMania 27. Now we move to the biggest show of 2011, WrestleMania 27. And yes, we will be back here a few more times. Money in the Bank had been moved off Mania by this point and the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal was still three years away, so WWE needed a new trick to get as many mid-carders on the show as possible. Their answer was this, a total totally pointless eight-man tag match pitting four assorted babyfaces against Nexus offshoot The Core. The story leading into this match was, well, there wasn't one really. The Core had just beaten up Big Show on SmackDown and Kofi was a last-minute replacement for Vladimir Kozlov. That is all you need to know. The match itself lasted a whopping 92 seconds, which was just enough time for all the good guys to hit their finishers on The Core before Big Show pinned Heath Slater. What did this match add to WrestleMania, nothing, and that is why we are not wasting any more of our precious time talking about it. Next! Number 8, the Divas Mistletoe on a Pole match on SmackDown. Whilst less common than six or seven years prior, 2011 still sadly had a few matches that were designed to, in the words of Maximum Male Models, titillate the juices of our guilty pleasures. A major example of this was a Christmas cringe fest from the December 2nd, 2011 edition of SmackDown. The Bella Twins AJ Lee, Oxana, Tamina, Alicia Fox, Rosa Mendez, Natalia, and a Caitlyn in a pear tree, all dressed up in various holiday-themed outfits for this match, put together by Mick Foley, who was dressed as Santa Claus. Because of course he was. Foley said that the winner of the match, in which the objective was to retrieve a piece of mistletoe from the top of a pole, would receive a very special prize. 51 whole seconds later, and Brie Bella was the one entitled to said prize. Was her title match, the opportunity to compete at WrestleMania, tickets to one of Mick's stand-up gigs? Nope, it was the opportunity to kiss any superstar of Bree's choosing between now and Christmas. If the costumes, the runtime, and the stakes of this match don't prove how dire WWE's women's division was at this time, then nothing will. Number 7, Kelly Kelly vs Brie Bella at Money in the Bank Money in the Bank 2011, what a show. Not only were the two ladder matches excellent, not only did Big Show and Mark Henry go to war, not only did Randy Orton and Christian put on a barn burner, but there was also that main event between CM Punk and John Cena. 
The one match from this card that is not fondly remembered though is the Divas Championship clash between Kelly Kelly and Brie Bella. K-Squared had recently beaten Brie for the gold on Raw, and their rematch went down in front of a rabid Chicago crowd. Unfortunately, not even they could bring life to this dull affair. Kelly Kelly was never a great wrestler, and she proved it in this match. The head scissors, in inverted commas, she hits on Brie in the opening 30 seconds looked about as realistic as Donald Trump. Trump's hair, and her offense didn't get much better throughout the match. Brie and Kelly might have gotten away with this one had it happened on a standard night, but the historic nature of the show means that it's relatively well remembered. Number 6. Sin Cara vs. Sin Cara at Hell in a Cell Known as Mystico in his native Mexico, the original Sin Cara had a lot of hype surrounding him when he debuted for WWE in 2011. Unfortunately, that hype died pretty much as soon as the character botched his first entrance. Things got worse when the Faceless One was handed a 30-day suspension for violating the wellness policy just three months into his run. During his time away, WWE introduced a new version of the character character with a darker persona. And by that, we mean this Sin Cara wore black instead of blue. The two Sin Caras faced off at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, and it was… bleh. For a match involving two supposed high flyers, the two men barely did anything exciting at all. It didn't help that the ring was bathed in that weird lighting, making it hard for fans in attendance or watching at home to tell which masked wrestler was which. The whole thing just fell flat, and the imposter storyline was dropped two weeks later when the newer Sin Cara was unmasked. What a waste of time. Number 5. Triple H vs Kevin Nash at TLC An alien invasion. Giant killer bumblebees. John Cena pulling a mask off to reveal that he was David Arquette the whole time. These are just some of the twists WWE could have used in the Summer of Punk storyline that would have been better than Kevin Bloody Nash. Big Sexy's 2011 run took many turns, including getting involved in the main event of SummerSlam, attacking Triple H at Vengeance, and finally squaring off against the game in a sledgehammer ladder match at TLC. What's a sledgehammer ladder match, I hear you ask? A bad idea. That's what it is. It's fair to say that 42-year-old Triple H and 52-year-old Kevin Nash did not put on an all-time classic. Instead, the two click buddies spent most of this near 20-minute encounter walking around, hitting each other with plunder, and then walking around some more. It was far too long and had a far too complicated storyline behind it, plus there was the blatant nepotism of Trips giving his good friend a pay-per-view payday. Number 4. The Miz vs John Cena at WrestleMania 27 Poor Miz. It's really something to be the third most important part of your own singles main event at WrestleMania. Shortly before Mania 27, The Rock returned to WWE as the special guest host for the evening. It was clear to many that this appearance was actually actually to sow the seeds for a future encounter between the Great One and Miz's opponent for Mania, John Cena. With focus squarely on John vs Dwayne, The Miz, who was WWE Champion at the time, felt completely out of place. What followed was a 15 minute match with zero heat to it and zero excitement generated by either participant. Things got more disappointing when the main event of WrestleMania ended in a double countout. Rocky then made his way down to the ring, started the bout and hit Cena with a rock bottom to allow a concussed Miz to pick up the win. It was bland, it ended with a wet fart, one of the competitors got hurt, and it was all to set up a match in one year's time. There is a reason a lot of people call this the worst WrestleMania main event ever. Number 3. Jerry Lawler vs Michael Cole at Over the Limit if you aren't a fan of the words Michael Cole or Jerry the King Lawler, then put this video on mute, that way we still get the ad revenue, and go and do something else because you're about to hear them a lot. After months of bickering, fighting, and the bringing up of deceased mothers, Cole and Lawler finally put their feud to bed in a kiss my foot match at Over the Limit. Cole tried to weasel out of the encounter by stating that his athlete's foot had become infected, even brandishing a note from his doctor. The referee then ripped the note up and started the match anyway, which in fairness shows blatant disregard for the safety of those involved. 
After three minutes of action, if you can call it that, in which Michael Cole actually got some offense in against Lawler, the King finally pinned his adversary and the crowd rejoiced in watching Cole kiss the feet of the Memphis legend. Number 2. Michael Cole and Jack Swagger vs Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross at Extreme Rules At the pay-per-view before Over the Limit, Cole and Lawler clashed once again, only this time they dragged poor Jack Swagger and Jim Ross into their awful storyline. The beloved Attitude Era commentary duo squared off against the baddies at Extreme Rules in what was being billed as a country whipping match. If you're wondering what a country whipping match is, then don't worry because I am too, and I've seen the match. It's like a fever dream, featuring several surreal sequences, including Lawler spanking the current Jake Hager on his big patriotic bottom. JR gets the coldest hot tag in history, whipping Cole and even putting an ankle lock on Swagger. This utterly bizarre match ends with Cole rolling up the Oklahoma native to end one of the oddest spectacles in wrestling history. Number 1. Michael Cole vs Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania 27 Here it is, folks, the match that starts started it all. Cole was in full heel mode at this point, putting Dominic Mysterio to shame by how hard he was subbing for WWE Champion The Miz. He even cost Lawler a title match, leading to this doomed face-off at the Showcase of the Immortals. If this had been a quick squash match to give Lawler the win and kill off heel Michael Cole, then it would have been fine, I guess. But it wasn't. It was nearly 15 minutes of Lawler selling Cole's offense like he was Minoru Suzuki. Not even Steve Austin as the special guest referee could make this match interesting before it mercifully ended when Lawler made Cole tap out to the ankle lock. But no, wait, it's not over yet. The anonymous Raw general manager then chimed in, reversing the decision due to Austin's antics awarding Cole the victory. For its abhorrent content, its stupid finish, and for giving us two other matches on this list, Michael Cole vs. Jerry Lawler at WrestleMania isn't just the worst match of 2011, but it might just be one of the worst WWE matches of all time.